Taoiseach. Taoiseach, it is a question in almost all conversations throughout the land today. People are asking the question why it is that you and your colleagues in Fine Gael and the Labour Party are pressing the people to change the constitution to facilitate policies that are inflicting more and more misery on our people. Last week, Taoiseach, the Irish League of Credit Unions published the results of a survey that showed that 47% of Irish homes had but €100 Euro to spend following on the payment of expected bills on a monthly basis, €100 Euro per month to spend. And you are imposing more stealth taxes and charges on these same families. You are cutting health, education and social welfare, even for people with disabilities and special needs, a number of whom protested outside the gates of this building yesterday. Taoiseach, without question, this is austerity in action, and you are presiding over it. That is the position you are sorry, presiding sorry, sorry, over sorry. it, and even, even, pass no remarks, please, even, please, please, even please. In, your own, in your own terms, Taoiseach, your approach is simply not working. It's not working because we have growing unemployment, we have significant emigration, and make no mistake about it, we clearly have a stagnant economy. Question, so, Teacher, I ask you, will you withdraw the bogus threat that in the event of our voting no to the austerity treaty on the 31st of May, that we will no longer be able to access funding under the ESM, which is the only argument that I have heard from government voices in Sorry, relation Deputy, to sir. this particular treaty. And Taoiseach, will you admit here to this House that this threat, this blackmail clause, is not in the austerity treaty that we will be voting on on the 31st of May, but actually is in another treaty the ESM Treaty, over which you do have the power of veto and to block. Thank you, David. Uh, I'm not sure where your, where, your, where, where your leader is today, the leader of the No campaign in this case. Um, let, me, let, me, let me deal with your last question first. Um, I understand that uh, Deputy Pringle has decided to take uh, proceedings in the High Court which include the uh, seeking of an order to, uh, which would compel the state to hold a referendum on the ESM. And he also challenges the process to, uh, to amend articles of the treaties of the, of the, of the Lisbon Treaty, which is already underway. Uh, you should be well aware, Deputy O'Quailon, that the ESM is a, is a funding <coughs> arrangement uh, and is not uh, necessary to hold a referendum on that because it's a funding arrangement that is entirely compatible uh, with the uh, Constitution. It does not in any way uh, serve to uh, limit sovereignty of the state in the exercise of its economic affairs. It merely indicates the state's willingness to participate as an equal sovereign nation in the permanent stability mechanism. Now, I find it, I find it quite incongruous that a party like yours uh, would seek to take action in regard to the state actually giving people information uh, about what is in this treaty and what it actually means. Because you can take it from me, Deputy O'Kailan, the government wants our citizens, citizens of our state, to have uh, every available information given to them in understandable form so that they're properly and fully aware of the decision that they must make on the 31st of May, which is the most important decision which the Irish people will make in a very long time because it's about our future and about our country's future and our children's future. Now, y y you, seek, uh, you seek to challenge this in the court on the basis that the government uh, are not acting in accordance with the McKenna judgment. I'd like you to know that the, uh, on, on this occasion, on, uh, unlike any other referendum we've ever held, the government will send out to every household in the country the exact wording of the treaty in the Irish language and in the English language, together with a factual, merely factual explanation of what the treaty is about. As distinct from that, the parties of government will run their own individual party campaigns, which will promote a very strong 
yes campaign on the basis of asking the people for their authorization to ratify this treaty <coughs> on the 31st of May because of the importance of it to the Irish economy, the future of our country, the future of every worker and every business and every person in the country. And we make no apology for doing that. So the, the treaty um, wording, Deputy O'Quailon, is being sent out to every household together with a factual explanatory memorandum uh, which is in the, entirely in keeping with the, uh, with the McKenna judgment. And that will be followed later during the course of the campaign with a second uh, leaflet which will be sent out to people. I might say to you that um, at, last, at last week's meeting of the committee, um, I dealt with this in some detail at the uh, estimates in the, uh, in, in the committee room. And I spelt out for the, for the members of the committee who were present uh, the spending that would be made by the government in regard to its factual information being given to people. There was no uh, Sinn Féin representative there. Deputy McLaughlin chose not to turn up. There was no objection to that either at the committee or on the occasion here when, these, uh, when, when the estimate went through the House on Friday. So to come in here now and say that this is a blackmail clause about an austerity treaty uh, smacks of absolute hypocrisy and you might Thank inform you. Deputy Adams of that and you might also inform him that when he does make his proposition for a no vote he should explain to the people of Ireland how it is, how it is that he purports uh, that this country should be run, uh, where, we should, where we should fund our services from, where we should pay our people from um, and, uh, and in, in what context. Um, we have a future of confidence, given that you say vote no against uh, this referendum. Thank you. So from a government perspective, we give the treaty and factual information to every citizen. From the parties that support this uh, referendum, they will individually launch their own campaigns. Thank you. I might add as well, finally, Deputy O'Quailon, that the government have made available 2.2 million to the referendum commission, which will act entirely independently in its work in informing people of what the, uh, what the Fiscal Stability Treaty is about. Deputy O'Quailan, one minute. Well, for somebody who claims that they want to ensure full information, I have it to say, Taoiseach, you never answered one of the questions I've just put to you. So you've offered no information here this morning, other than again to regurgitate the same position and indeed to utilise the argument of fear, which is what you're <coughs> proposing once again. And you have repeated the bogus threat. That's what it amounts to. And I believe that the people will see that it is bogus. And they will have the courage, recognising it's not only in Ireland's interest, but indeed in the interest of, a right, of people's right across Europe, that they will vote no on the 31st of May. Now, I want to ask the teacher Thank you. how he is going to put our public finances back in order how he is going to pay teachers and nurses and guardi a question that he's very happy Sorry, very you. happy to put across this house but let's put the question back to you teacher how do you propose to pay teachers nurses and guardi if this treaty is ratified because what are the consequences of ratification Sorry, Deputy, this treaty will time. mean an additional six billion euro in cuts and taxes on top of the eight billion in cuts over the next three years on the Troika and indeed and indeed and indeed along with the billions that you want to continue to pay to the former Anglo-Irish Bank and to other uh, unsecured you, bank bondholders. Now if you have to depend on Deputy. the chorus of heckling, Sorry, which is Deputy. very much a part of this expanded government number here since this doll was convened Thank last you, year. You you know, that's a please. sorry reflection on you and your government, uh, Minister colleagues. So over let time, me Deputy. ask you, will you admit, Taoiseach, that this is the reality of the treaty, the facts and figures that I've just outlined, if that treaty is, ad if is adopted and if we are tied to a GDP structural deficit Thank you. limit of 0.5% and an equally severe debt to GP, GDP reduction target. So, Peter, let there be no mistake about it. Thank you, Deputy. There's only one real Troika on the floor of this House, and that is the Troika of Fine Gael, Labour and Fianna Fáil, who want once Thank again you. to pull the wool over the eyes of the Irish electorate. People should be strong and vote no. 
use the opportunity to put the record straight on this house. It's question time.